This is Fishman's brand new Triple Play Utility app. It'll get you set up with a guitar and a virtual instrument in minutes. I'm gonna walk through how I dial in the perfect settings right now. Let me show you. For this video, I'm gonna be using this guitar. If you don't have a guitar just like this, you can check out the Fishman Triple Play Learning Course. It's over here. I'll be using Logic here, but if you don't use Logic, don't worry. The course covers all of the most popular DAWs, and you can check that out in the description below. As you can see, I already have the Triple Play Utility installed here, and the very first thing that I like to do is set the bend range mode to plus 12, minus 12. I will say, the utility is awesome because you just set it and forget it. You can close it after you configure, and it all just gets stored on the Triple Play device. The second thing that I like to do is consider what type of bend mode I'm gonna be needing for my song. So in simple terms, it's whether or not the notes bend or don't bend. Uh, trigger takes the bend mode and shuts it off completely, so everything just snaps to the notes no matter where you're playing. There's no uh, sliding or bending that's possible. Smooth, on the other hand, is when I'm playing leads or want to do vibrato or slide around, uh, it will capture every single nuance of my playing, but it's not as accurate in terms of, you know, note placement. So uh, I like to switch between those depending on what I'm trying to build. And then auto and step are nice blends between those two extremes. Now moving on to dynamics, this slider just controls the level of velocity that the triple play is sending to the DAW. So when it's all the way to the right, the full range of velocity values are possible with your playing. If you play soft, you'll get smaller velocity values. If you play loud, you'll get louder velocity values. If you drag it all the way to one side, though, everything is just maximum volume all the time. So depending on what you're trying to play, you might find that you want less or more, but this is really just a taste. Also, I know I might be going a little bit fast. If for any reason you forget what these items do on the screen, or if you just want to learn more detail, you can click on this little eye icon which will bring up a help tooltip box. Before moving on to the next page of this utility, I wanna mention the top two boxes that I skipped over. Transpose does what you think it does. As you change these values, the MIDI values are transposed full octaves or you can change to semitones. When it comes to channel mode, 99.9% .9 of the time you're going to be using single channel mode. But if for some reason you wanted to play different things on different strings, for example, playing drums on the A string and playing a bass line on the E string, you can switch to multi-channel mode to do that. Okay, moving on to the next page of the utility app. This is where you set all the sensitivities for the strings. As you can see, when I play a note, it registers on the screen. If I were to turn this number up, I'm gonna turn it all the way to max just for the sake of example, and I start playing, you can see that the light is jumping much further. This is correlating directly to the velocity values that the triple play is outputting to your DAW. What you wanna do is find the perfect set of numbers where everything is consistent. All done, and that took less than 30 seconds. Moving down to play style now, this actually scales the sensitivities that you set above. Finger picking is naturally more quiet than playing with a pick, and setting the slider will adjust the sensitivities accordingly. So at this point, you're probably good to go. But there are a couple of small options that, if you're interested in, you might want to adjust. I'm going to talk about those options now. The first one is monitor hand position down at the bottom here. When enabled, it limits the range in which the notes can be played. It sort of guesses where you are on the fretboard in an attempt to eliminate ghost notes. If you don't know what a ghost note is, it's a very quiet note that normally on a guitar isn't heard, but in MIDI world, it can be amplified to max volume, so it's nice to be able to get rid of those. It's not as good with leads, but it's really good with chords, so I say play with it and see what works for you. The next tab is a tuner, which is super convenient, and it helps with making sure that all the tracking is accurate. And then the last tab is settings related to the buttons physically on the device here. In these menus, you can change what the buttons actually do. So for me personally, I like to make the up and down buttons transpose the octave, and then when I press them both together, I like to switch between the bend modes, but your setup might be a little different. At this point, I've covered pretty much everything you'd need to know to get started with the utility app. One last thing to keep in mind is how the triple play actually communicates with the utility. It sends MIDI signals back and forth, and in a very small number of cases, it can cause your DAWs or your synthesizers to misbehave. In order to stop that from happening, all DAWs come with MIDI settings that allow you to enable or disable certain types of MIDI channels. This TP control channel is the one that communicates with the utility. We're just gonna shut that off. Now I don't have to worry about that anymore.
My favorite thing about the utility app is that every change I make is saved automatically into the hardware, so anytime I have an idea, I can just plug in and start playing, and it sounds exactly like I want it to. Now that I'm all set, I better start testing out this new Civ.